In this lecture, the main interaction between sun and glazing will be analyzed. A given oriented and inclined surface on Earth receives a global solar radiation, which is the sum of three components, direct, diffuse, and reflected radiation, from the ground or the surrounding surfaces. Of such overall amount incident on a glass surface, part is reflected, part is absorbed, and part is transmitted. Of the absorbed energy, a part returns to the outside, and a part is released inside, due to the heating of the glass. However, the fraction of solar energy transmitted does not correspond to the fraction of light transmitted. This is due to the fact that glass transmits all wavelengths of the solar spectrum, not only the ones contained in the visible spectrum. Depending on the type of glass, the windows is crossed in different ways by solar radiation, which can be considered both from the energy and from the light point of view. For example, generally, a single glazing component is characterized by transmission in the visible spectrum and in the solar one of about 90% and 85% respectively, while a double glazing have lower values. The energy balance of a glass pane is given by the following formula, where QGL is the total energy flux through the glass, A is the solar radiation flux transmitted through the glass, B is the fraction of incident solar energy flux absorbed by the glass and transferred inside. C is the thermal flux due to the difference in temperature between inside and outside. The instantaneous energy balance can then be written as follows, where tau is the solar transmission factor of glass, function of the incident angle of solar beam and diffuse radiation. IT is the total solar irradiance incident on the glass in watt and I represent the fraction of solar energy absorbed by the glass and released into the internal environment by radiation in the far infrared and convection, given by the ratio UGL over HO, where UGL is the overall heat transmission coefficient, or thermal transmittance, of the glass expressed in watt square meter Kelvin, and HO is the external surface heat transfer coefficient in watt square meter Kelvin. For a 3 mm clear glass, an I can be considered constant and equal to 0.26. Finally, alpha is the absorption coefficient of glass. TO is the temperature of external air. TI is the temperature of internal air. Since the terms A and B are linked to solar radiation, while C exists even in its absence, the question can be written as follows, where SHGC is the solar heat gain coefficient characteristic of each type of fenestration, which varies with the incident angle. A higher value is generally preferred in solar heat applications to capture maximum sun, whereas in cooling applications, a low SHGC reduces unwanted solar heat gain. Due to the selectivity of the glass to radiation, not all waves pass through the glass in the same way, so the designer should select the most suitable glazing according to the climate. Theoretically, the ideal glass should be capable of transmitting mainly the radiation in the visible range, leaving the spectral distribution unchanged so as to ensure the same color per perception that would occur in the absence of glass. In the cold season, the ideal glass should also be able to transmit the near-infrared fraction of solar radiation indoors to contribute to space heating and it should be able to block the far-infrared radiation emitted by the heated rooms. In the hot season, by contrast, the ideal glass should be able to block the near-infrared component of solar radiation to reduce the heat gain and transmit the far-infrared radiation emitted by the interior space.
In principle, in hot climates with high solar radiation, the ideal would be to use glass with low SHGC or alternatively use solar shed. Unfortunately, real glass with low SHGC also shows poor light transmission, which forces occupant to use artificial lighting, or poor light quality, too cold, resulting in the need to blend it with artificial light. Tinted glass, in fact, changes the solar spectrum. If the glass is bronze or grey, light quality is little alterated and the low light transmittance lead to increase the window surface, which outweighs the benefit of a low SHGC. In order to reduce the problem of high solar gains in buildings, spectrally selective glass, which can attenuate the infrared component of the solar spectrum while maintaining good transparency to visible radiation, can be adopted. However, due to the low emissivity which characterizes these types of component, they are extremely positive in cold climates and season, but unsuitable or even useless in hot climates and seasons. In such respect, a further option consists in the application of shading systems in order to avoid summer overheating and to allow solar gain in colder seasons. Among shading, Venetian blinds are the classical system able to control the sunlight, but also to redirect it. By adjusting the inclination according to the sun position, the blades reflect the rays onto the ceiling, which must be light colored, obtaining a diffuse illumination. In conclusion, the proper selection of glazing components together with the shading system should be considered one of the main factors that mostly affects the performance of the buildings and their comfort.